Good morning, church, and welcome to The Crossing Online. Today we begin a four-part series entitled Reaping Biblical Benefits. And what we want to focus on in this series is our devotion to the Lord. How do we develop deeper devotion to the Lord, and how do we develop our uh, devotional daily life? And so we're going to be in Galatians chapter 6 to start off today, but I wanted to sort of tell the story about how I came upon this passage when in 10th grade I was seeking to develop my personal devotional life uh, in a way that I hadn't done before. As some of you know, I grew up in East Africa and went to boarding school. And in my dorm, there were bedrooms on the first floor, and then we had an upper room that was used as a study room. And I remember this one Saturday morning as I was trying to figure out kind of how to have meaningful time in the Word and meaningful time in prayer. I went up to that room, kind of too cold to really enjoy the outside that morning. And so I was up there flipping through Galatians and trying to, to read and understand. And this passage just connected to me because it spoke the motivation that I needed to continue to invest in my spiritual life. And so what I decided to do that day was to memorize this passage of Scripture. And so my prayer is that that will be motivation for each of you as you develop and try to deepen your own devotional lives. I have two educational goals for the day. I want you to learn a memory device, an acrostic called REAP. Uh, REAP is something that we'll be in for the next four weeks, but specifically today, uh, I have another memory device that I hope uh, will be a tool uh, for many of you to use, and that memory device is, was designed by the navigators, and it's called the Word Hand. And so the two educational goals for us today is to learn REAP and the Word Hand. And the spiritual goal that connects to that is that we would put that into daily practice. And so my prayer for you, church, today is that you would reap the benefit of our time together by putting into practice what you have learned. So let's go to that passage in Galatians. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9. And this is what the Bible says. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A person will reap whatever he sows. The one who sows to please the sinful nature, from that nature he will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Holy Spirit will reap eternal life. So, do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Did you notice how in that passage the word reap appeared again and again? and again, and a fourth time. The idea, the principle, is that we actually do reap benefits according to the way that we sow. And so the first principle is this, is that whatever a person reaps is what they sow. It's, and, sorry, whatever a person sows is what they will reap. It's an agricultural truth, right? If you plant apple trees in an orchard, then at harvest time, you will harvest or reap 
apples. If you use the land and you put in the ground soybeans, then you will grow soybean plants and you will harvest soybeans. So agriculturally speaking, whatever you plant, whatever you sow, you will reap. The same is true in other parts of our life. If we have the discipline of daily exercise and we sow physically uh, exerting ourselves in exercise, whether it's weightlifting or doing cardio or yoga or walking regularly, then we reap the benefit, the health benefit of being healthy and energetic people. The same is true for our spiritual lives. So if we want to have a vibrant devotional life, a vibrant spiritual life, to be intimate with God and to have deep understanding in spiritual matters, then we must sow in order to reap. And so I've used the term reap as an acrostic for us uh, to use on a regular basis. So the acrostic reap, the R stands for read the word. Read the word. The E stands for examine the message of the word. Examine the message of the word. The A stands for apply the lesson from the word to our daily lives. Apply the lesson to daily living. And the P stands for pray. Pray that we have the power to put it into practice. Pray that we grow spiritually. So reap is read, examine, apply, and pray. Each of the four weeks, we'll be looking at one of those components. And so this week, we want to look at reading the Word. And in order to do that, I uh, have a, a second memory device that we want to use, and it's called um, the Word Hand that the navigators produce. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to show you with my hand. Uh, this becomes the, the canvas on which to paint the picture uh, in your memory. So we have the pinky finger right here, and the pinky finger is uh, hearing the word. The ring finger is reading the word. The middle finger is studying the word, and the pointer is memorizing the word. The thumb, this one is cool, it's meditating on the word. And the way meditation works is it touches everything else that we do. So if we are just hearing the word in a sermon like this, or if we hear something on Christian radio, uh, then we can actually meditate on its meaning and perhaps learn something from it that we can apply to our daily lives. So for the remainder of our time together, what I'd like to do is to just talk a little bit more about each of those components of receiving the Word of God, of sowing the Word into our daily lives. So hearing the Word happens uh, when you listen to Christian radio or maybe uh, you uh, just come to church every week and hear a sermon. And what we know about hearing is that it's really important. In fact, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says that faith comes through hearing. The only way that we receive, that we have faith in Jesus Christ is actually hearing the word of Christ, hearing the gospel. We must hear first in order to have faith in what We've heard. So I want to say that it's important. At the same time, of all of the things that we've talked about, the pinky finger is the weakest. On average, people only retain about 5% of what they hear. And so what we want to do is beef up our hearing of the word by being more intentional, 
active listeners. So if you are listening to the word in order to hear, in order to have faith, then what I suggest is that you become an active listener, right? So let's make a pinky promise. I know that was corny. A pinky promise that we will be active listeners. And active listening uh, seeks to clarify the content of the message. This means you might just restate that in your own words. Uh, if you have some questions about what was said, asking those questions as a follow-up so that you have understanding. So you clarify the content. Uh, that's an important part of active listening. This is what I heard. Did I get it right? And then the second thing I would say about active listening is that you try to capture the lesson and that works best by summarizing or restating the key concept in your own words. I think that if you do those two things, if you clarify the content and you capture the message in, by restating in your own words, if you do those two things, I think that you'll retain much more than the average 5%. The ring finger represents reading the word. And so <laughs> I think about the movie Tommy Boy where David Spade is talking to Chris Farley and he says, it's called reading. Top to bottom, right to left, put words together to form a sentence. Um, and I know that actually reading the scripture is uh, something that may be more complicated than that, but basically what we're saying is you must set time aside to do the function of reading, to open the Bible, look at it top to bottom, right to left, and read the contents of Scripture. But here I just want to maybe give some personal advice. This is just me. Um, lots of times people will ask me, so when you read the Bible, what translation should I be reading. And so what uh, I advise is it really depends on what you hope to gain from reading. And so different translations help in different ways. And I'm just going to talk about some of, of the popular ones. Uh, basically there are two values that I have when I approach a translation and examine it for its usefulness. One is how accurately does it translate the message of the original languages? How accurately does it represent the original Bible in its original form and languages? And the second thing that I look for is um, how readable is it? How easy is, is it for me to understand? And those two values sometimes are in competition and sometimes you can find a good balance. So let me um, recommend uh, that anyone who's starting out reading scripture that you get the NIV, New International Version. The New International Version is kind of the best of both worlds. It is not a literal word for word translation. Instead, they translate idea by idea. So you can't really do word studies, there are some limitations, but it uh, represents the idea by idea of scripture in regular common English language that many people will find no problem reading and understanding. So I think if you're only gonna have one Bible, that's a great Bible to use. Uh, another translation uh, that I think is good, it's a little bit more difficult to you to read, but it's very good and precise in its translation of the Greek and Hebrew, and that's the New American Standard Bible, the NASB. Um, and that's very good as a study Bible, uh, but sort of hard to read, out, particularly out loud um, in a group study session. Then there's three other uh, pretty popular translations that I think are all about the same. It's the ESV, English Standard Version, the CSV, the Holman Christian Standard Version, and the RSV or NRSV, the Revised Standard Version. Those 
those are uh, versions of the Bible that I think uh, have uh, a good balance, uh, a word for word accuracy, and still quite readable. Um, there are a couple other translations, translations that people like, uh, the Message and the New Living Translation. I love those translations. They're very inspired and thoughtful paraphrases, but they shouldn't be your first Bible. They should be read alongside one of the other Bible, other translations that are just a little bit more word for word or idea by idea accurate. But I think that they're very edifying if you read it as kind of your second Bible. So in picking a translation, you have to decide, does it, does it read well for me? And then whichever one reads the best for you, because you want to be using that every day, right? You want it to be something that isn't too cumbersome for you to use. And that's my advice in picking a Bible. And then I would just say that the next part of reading the Bible that's important is that you would pick a plan. Make a plan. And the simplest plan, plan is to read one chapter per day, five days a week, and make that your regular practice. So one chapter, five times a week. Um, that, that's a, a good plan. And I would just begin in one book of the Bible, like Matthew, uh, or one of the other Gospels, and just read one chapter a day and, and um, begin to understand the Scripture. Now, the middle finger is studying the Word. And notice that the middle finger is your, your grip, your strongest finger. It's the finger that if you're going to do pull-ups, you, you hang on with. And I think that's a, a really good illustration of how important studying the Word is. So basically, studying the Word is uh, active reading. It's asking some basic questions. And when we get to examine next week, we'll go a little bit deeper on ways to study the Word. But for today, let me just give you a study tip, okay? And tip here is also an acrostic, a study tip. And so uh, when you read the Bible, one way to study it is to um, look for the takeaway. What's the, what's the one big thing that I can take away and then the I is that would impact change in my life. And the P is that I could, um, could make a prayer point or to put into practice. So uh, a, the study tip that I have is that you would uh, get kind of the big takeaway that would impact your life in a way that you might change and pray about how that will work out in your life. And then another part of studying is not just um, asking the questions, but I think journaling the answers. And so you get your notebook out and you can write down uh, that prayer or whatever you get from the tip. And, and that's, that's important. If you get a practice of journaling or writing the big idea and what God has revealed to you each time you read the Bible, then you are going into a deeper place of study and you can always go back and look at those notes and see how God has spoken to you in the past. When we get to the pointer, we talk about memorization. And the amazing thing about memorization, just like how I began uh, with you today, uh, uh, just reciting a passage that I learned when I was in 10th grade, is that there's a way that memorization, it gets put straight into your heart, right? So that it can point you, and that's why it's the pointer finger. Memorization points you throughout your life. Um, so I have uh, several verses that are memorized. I think these key verses are important for us to, to memorize. One is from Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord your God with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. And so as I go through life and I'm trying to figure out which path I should take, that memory work points me in the right direction. You must trust God, Chad. 
Don't lean on just your everyday understanding. Make sure that whatever course of action you take, you acknowledge God. And he will, it's his promise, direct your path. And so that, when we memorize scripture and put it into our lives, then it serves as a pointer to direct us in the way that we should go. And then the thumb is uh, meditation. And I'm just reminded of Psalm 1, verses 2 and 3, that says, Blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord, who meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted by living water, in season yielding fruit, and the leaves never wither. Whatever he does will prosper. That, that picture of meditating, even on those verses, as I think about it, I think about, wow, how fruitful, how healthy, how vibrant a life I would have if I was like a tree planted by water. And I begin to go into a time of prayer of, how, Lord, fill me with the richness of your word that I might grow and be uh, a strong like a tree by water. And so meditation becomes uh, the, the thing that no matter whether we're hearing the word and we just ask those clarifying questions, right? And, and try to capture a, a lesson from it, that, that we can meditate on that heard word and just, um, and just let it impact our lives. If we're reading, we can meditate on the words that we read if we're studying, we can think about those day and night and, and let it direct our lives. Um, as we memorize, we get, we, wherever we are, in the car, driving a distance, uh, waiting in a waiting room, being stuck at home, you just meditate on the Word of God. So I hope that those um, different components might be something that you would be able to add, that we would be able to develop in our own daily devotional lives. Then we will really reap the benefits of the Bible as we try to honor God with our daily devotion. So I want to close with something that Jesus said. It's also an agricultural metaphor about sowing and reaping. He says, whoever puts their hand to the plow and turns back is not fit for the kingdom. The idea is that when you go to plow a field, you want to make straight rows in front of you. And so when the plow is set in the field and the animal is pulling the plow and you're steering the animal, you have to keep your eyes focused ahead you have to focus on where you're going, not where you've been. And as you focus on where you're going, then your path will be straight. And so Jesus uses that metaphor for our spiritual lives, that we put our hand to the plow and we continue to move forward in the way that we're directed. If we keep looking back, then the lines will be all catty wampus. <laughs> but um, those straight lines are made when you don't take your hand off the plow. And I think that's true for the word hand too. If we sow to please the Spirit by being receptive to the word, if we keep that word hand to the plow, then we will reap benefit. So today, what I'd like you to do is to think like, what do I need to do for my next step. What do I need to do? Is it to just develop and set aside a time? Be specific about it. Can I set aside five minutes, five times a week to just read the word and to pray? Do I need to add one of these other components? I've just been hearing and reading and skimming the, the Bible as I have it, but I haven't really gone deeper and 
I haven't really studied the Word, and maybe you want to put together a study plan for developing your life a bit further. Maybe it's the task of memorization. You say, you know, I've, I've just got a, a tired old brain, and I just don't remember like I used to. Well, uh, the advantage of being young is that it's easier to remember, and the advantage of being old is that you have more mature discipline and more time to get it done. And so what I would like to argue is that all of these ways of receiving the word are still important, and there may be a specific goal that we need to set for developing a more regular devotional life. And I just want you to ask the Spirit to reveal that to you. Do I need to, to change the way that I hear that I'm a more active listener, right? Do I need to put together a Bible reading plan? Is there a book that I want to study from beginning to end in the Bible, like one of the Gospels or the Proverbs? Is there some key passages that I must memorize? So when you're specific about that plan, I would say that you let it stretch you. Risk enough, right? when you make a plan like that, that your life will develop, that you're not just maintaining a habit, but you're risking enough that you'll grow in the faith. My prayer is that you'll be motivated to sow deep into the Spirit that you will reap the benefits of that Holy Spirit in your life. So what I would like you to do is to make a plan for how you can go deeper in the Bible. And then hold yourself accountable to that. Maybe speak it to one other person. Say, this is my plan in a week. Could you ask me how I'm doing? I think, brothers and sisters, as all of us go deeper into the Scripture, we will reap the biblical benefits of God's Word, and our community will be transformed. One at a time. I pray for you, brothers and sisters. I love you. Be blessed.